2022, we had probably seven times the amount of sales. But a system like this now probably costs about $40,000 to build out. We are spending zero on advertising. So a mixer goes down, it's $1,000. A freezer goes down, it's $800. My name is Rebecca Divin, and my business is Kind Crumbs. It's a wholesale gluten-free bakery. I started it in 2009 after getting diagnosed with celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder. When people with celiac disease eat gluten, which is the protein in barley, rye, and wheat, it causes your body to attack its own stomach lining and can cause a lot of health problems. So when I was diagnosed, it was really hard to find good gluten-free baked goods. It was hard to find anything at all. What you did find was pretty poor quality and expensive and not good. So I started experimenting at home. Uh, I've always loved to bake and uh, started making things that I enjoyed and that turned into selling them on the side and doing birthday cakes and wedding cakes. Over time I started a home-based business under the Michigan Cottage Law for food businesses and then eventually started renting a catering kitchen and worked my way up to delivering to stores. My initial investments were about $15,000 and these were bake loans. I have never had investors. I started out with getting a mixer and all of the basic pots, pans, bowls, and about a palette of ingredients. Um, the ingredients are some of the most expensive parts of this particular business. Gluten-free flours are super expensive. Um, equipment is very expensive. This mixer over here was the first mixer we ever got in 2014. It's a 20-quart Hobart mixer. Eventually we added a 60 quart Hobart and the next step up will be even bigger than that. We started out in a catering kitchen with just a small amount of equipment and then as we grew we moved into this space, leased it out, took out over a hundred grand in loans just to put in like the hood system that you see up here. So this is required by the government agencies that look over businesses like ours and it's going to pull out the air from here and exchange it with outdoor air to make sure we're not breathing in fumes from the ovens. Um, obviously we have a lot of ovens, we have six. This is relatively small amount of ovens for a wholesale bakery. Eventually we'll have much bigger ones where entire racks of product can just roll in and out. So we're still sort of in the beginning stages of a business like this but a system like this now probably costs about forty thousand dollars to build out so when thinking about starting a bakery this is a huge budget item um, to have your hood with your makeup air this machine right here is a filler so what we're doing right now is making some cakes vanilla cakes and vanilla cupcakes this will go down we can dump a bowl full of batter in there and then as you can see she's using a pedal to deposit certain amounts of dough and we can set those amounts. So this is way faster than the old way of scooping three or four people standing around every cupcake getting a scoop. Um, so this is a big step up in equipment for us. It saves a lot of time on labor. When I first started the business, it was mostly just me. So I would get up early bake for several hours, finish, package, label, and then go deliver. And then the next morning I would get up really early to do bookkeeping, invoicing, things like that. So it ended up being a lot of 10, 12, 14 hour days. Starting a business like this is a lot of work. It is pretty grueling. Now it's definitely different. I've got a team of great people. We are in our eighth year commercially operating, that is operating out of a licensed commercial space and delivering to grocery stores. And I don't often do the baking. I can jump in if I have a baker out sick. My tasks now are much more administrative and management, marketing, managing accounts, looking over schedules, um, ordering supplies, forecasting, budgeting, and setting goals, visiting stores that I'd like to see carry our products, interviewing employees when needed, all those sorts of things. It's, it's a pretty wide variety. What kind of stores do you look to be in? A lot of it starts with our customers saying, hey, we would like to buy Kind Crumbs products here in this part of town or in this city. Sometimes it comes from the stores contacting us. Actually, this happens quite a bit with regular bakeries and coffee shops. So a traditional bakery can't safely make gluten-free baked goods because of the amount of regular flour that's just on their equipment in the air. So for example, Sandy's Donuts on this side of town, they were like, well, we can't make a gluten-free donut that's safe for all parts of the gluten-free spectrum. 
spectrum, maybe some people that only are mildly affected with a gluten intolerance, that would be fine. But for a lot of us with celiac disease and other like wheat allergy type reactions, it's not good enough. So they'll call us and say, hey, bring us, you know, a couple hundred donuts, and then they will sell them throughout the week in a separate display case and keep their gluten-free customers safe. So yeah, anywhere from a traditional bakery to a cafe to a restaurant that might use our pizza crusts, all the way up to grocery stores, grocery stores, health food stores, the DNW stores, family fair grocery stores, those are sort of um, the bulk of our market and our sales. How do you guys advertise? The only advertising that we do is social media through Facebook and Instagram. And so that reaches both the end customer, the consumer that's buying the products, but it also reaches the businesses that are also using the social media. So when we post a photo of a seasonal donut right now, we just brought back our raspberry lemon donuts, both the stores and the coffee shops that carry them and the people that are actually buying them are seeing those posts. And so it kind of does double duty for us. And the rest of it is just reaching out to the current customers and saying, hey, you know, we have this new seasonal item. It's almost time for pumpkin. <laughs> are you ready for some pumpkin items? So you're not spending a lot on advertising? We are spending zero on advertising, other than the cost to keep our website up. At the very beginning, the first accounts I got were literally me going into a store with a box of samples and asking for the manager or the director and having a conversation. So the first store we ever started delivering to was Forest Hills Foods. Um, so this was in 2014, and Forest Hills Foods has been sort of a hot spot for people on a gluten-free diet in the Grand Rapids area, and so that's why I started there. A lot of the stores are literally just me walking in with a box of samples and saying, hey, try my cookies, and most of the time it works out quite well. I would say that our customer base is not only gluten-free people. I, I feel like we wouldn't sell as much as we do if only gluten-free people were buying it. It's dairy-free, it's soy-free, there's lots of egg-free options, we're not using nuts. Um, and it just tastes good, you know, so what we try to go for is a family with one or two gluten-free people, but the product is just as good as normal stuff, or it's even better because we're making it like a home-based baker would make it like that quality. Um, and so everyone in the whole family is going to eat it. And, you know, we get posts on social media about somebody bought gluten-free donuts because they're gluten-free, but they have to hide it from the rest of the family. Otherwise, they'll eat their donuts. And so then they just end up buying more, which is good for us. Which product is your best seller? There are several products that are just kind of tied for the winner. Um, I would say blueberry muffins, lemon poppy muffins, our triple chocolate donuts, triple chocolate cupcakes, carrot cupcakes. Those are probably the big ones. Oh, cinnamon rolls. We sell a ton of our gluten-free and vegan cinnamon rolls. Just a ton of them. They're so good. My favorite, oh, top three, triple chocolate donuts, cinnamon rolls, and our raspberry thumbprint cookies. And those are kind of a cult favorite. Our team really loves those too. I really think that every time they make them, they mess up a bunch of them just so that they can take the extras home, like the seconds. Like every single time, there's a big bag of just ones that are too ugly to package. And How long is the process of like starting to bake like a, a muffin or whatnot to actually selling it? How long does it take? Our shifts currently run about seven, seven and a half hours. Um, this is a slower season. In the fall, it's a little bit longer than that. Um, so if we measure out and mix out a batch of muffins, and when we make a batch of muffins, we might be making, I don't know, 104 packs, so maybe about 400 muffins. I would say probably two hours to three hours, depending on how warm it is in the kitchen, how long it takes them to cool. So it has to be measured, mixed, scooped, baked, cooled, packaged, labeled, lot coated, boxed up in cases and then stored in the freezer. This is kind of an important detail for anybody that's wanting to start a wholesale bakery such as this. You definitely want to have a ton of freezer space. These things have a short shelf life and as long as you're selling something with a short shelf life, it's almost impossible to make good money. You really have to do a frozen storage and sales model or at the very least frozen slack, which would be keeping it frozen, but then the stores put it out on the shelf as they need it and thaw it out and then it's on a room temp display. We spend a shift making right now between three and five different products and everything gets boxed up, cased, frozen. And then most days our delivery people are loading up our little white delivery van, which you may have seen around Grand Rapids with the Kind Crumbs logo on it and delivering to stores. Um, typically for most of our products, we're moving the entire stock every week or two. 
So we're making it every week or two, and we're moving all of it every week or two. How did you come up with the name Kind Crumbs? Kind crumbs refers to having celiac disease. When a person gets diagnosed with celiac disease, they get sent to a dietitian. The dietitian will say, you can't even have one breadcrumb, otherwise your immune system will be activated and you will get sick. And it is true for most celiacs, so it's important that every single crumb be free of gluten. So these are products that even a crumb of is not going to hurt your stomach. Can you tell us a little bit about like, your revenue streams and how they differentiate we have 45 different products. I'm not really sure how the revenue streams vary. I'm typically just looking at it as a whole. I will say that a wholesale gluten-free bakery is one of the lowest profit margin endeavors you can take on. <laughs> Your labor is expensive. The processes are more expensive. Um, good manufacturing processes uh, are always important, but we're extra diligent. We only use one allergen here, and that's eggs and just a few products. But we have to be diligent that no eggs are going to remain on any of the equipment for an egg-free batch. So things like that take a lot of extra time. Ingredients are very expensive. Selling them at wholesale prices uh, creates a very slim profit margin. The money is made by creating a huge volume of product. So when I started, I made no money. Probably took four or five years to make any kind of modest income. Probably took about six to seven years to make a living income as an owner operator, not profits above paying everybody doing work on behalf of the business. Um, so those kind of big profits don't come until you have a much huger business. So, but I would say between our first full year in 2015 and 2022, we had probably seven times the amount of sales and uh, probably, I would say, seven times as much income, too. So it's, it's grown a lot. I think focusing on steady growth as opposed to taking big risks is good advice for a business like this. And when you're trying to grow, are you trying to get into bigger stores, or are you trying to get more stores? More stores comes first, uh, but they have to be accounts that will make sense for our, our time. They need to fit in on a route. They need to be ordering enough that we can make money taking the time to make the delivery. The next few steps in growth are gonna involve using a distributor. So right now we're doing all of our own distribution. Signing on with the distributor allows us to get in tons more stores to spread throughout Michigan and the Midwest. Right now we're just as far as Lansing to the east, Kalamazoo to the south, Traverse City to the north, and then of course the lake shore along Lake Michigan. Distributors like to take about 25 percent of a product's end cost. So that's very expensive. And so for a lot of wholesale gluten-free businesses like this, that is probably more than the profit margin. So a distributor, you can't really afford until you're selling a lot of product. So it's just a matter of adding more and more stores and expanding until we can afford to pay someone. And then once that happens, the expansion goes a lot more quickly. We're making a lot more product. The more product we're making, the more ingredients we're buying, the more ingredients we buy at a time, the better prices we can get on it. Right now we buy pallets of ingredients. We just got a pallet of sugar um, yesterday. If we got a whole truckload of sugar, that price for the sugar would go down substantially. So that's one of the things that helps improve the profit margin. Another thing is the efficiency, adding automation equipment like the filler. Instead of making three different things in a day and having to change over and clean in between each product, just making vanilla cupcakes all day long, making a truckload of vanilla cupcakes in a shift as opposed to just several cases. Do you have any other plans on expanding, how do you get to the next level? So we'll continue to add stores. We're currently working on expanding to the east side of the state. We will eventually move to another unit in this business park. So we'll add about 50% more space and we will basically just install a huge freezer that we can store pallets in, drive our forklift around in, and load up distributor trucks if they come to pick up pallets. So that's the next phase for Kind Crumbs, which will probably happen in 2024. What are some of the expenses that people might not see that come with running a bakery? Big ones are insurance, liability insurance, workers' compensation, auto insurance. Unemployment insurance can be a fairly decent expense if you uh, have a lot of employees in 
there are claims. Repairs, unexpected repairs. You should expect the unexpected repairs. Um, repairs and equipment is incredibly expensive. If we have a mixer go down, someone has to come from the Hobart repair shop in town, and I think it's like 150 bucks just to have them show up. And then the labor is probably about the same per hour, and then the parts are incredibly expensive. So a mixer goes down, it's $1,000. A freezer goes down, it's $800. Um, we have two freezers. One of them's always going down. We probably call a repair company for freezers alone six to seven times a year. And each time they come, it's between $300 and 1000 So those are, yeah auto expenses you know we have two delivery vehicles for the bakery plus a freezer trailer that we can tow if we have a huge delivery those all have auto insurance repairs upkeep i would say yeah definitely factor in those expenses when pricing your products what are some of the best things about running a bakery and what are some of the the best thing and the worst thing is constant access to delicious baked goods. I would say, yeah, my day involves a lot of coffee and donuts and then pickleball in the evenings to work all the donuts off. Seriously, the best thing I think is just having a core group of people on the team that we really enjoy working together. The teamwork is good. We appreciate each other. We can joke around. It's low key. It's different from a storefront bakery where you have these rushes of customers and you're trying to meet everybody's expectations and you know constantly have people coming in and out, product that you're trying to make the right amount of. A lot of that pressure is off. We just focus on how we interact with each other and how we create great, consistent product efficiently. So I love that aspect of the wholesale business. Also, we're a Monday through Friday business. We're closed on the weekends. We more or less choose our hours. We're not up at 3 or 4 a.m. to fill a storefront bakery case. We run our shift from about 6.30 or 7 to 3. It's a pretty decent quality of life. I would say the biggest challenges have been the pandemic and the shutdowns and then the inflation that followed. It was definitely difficult during the initial uh, COVID-19 shutdowns. Many of our customers had their doors shuttered or great drops in, in sales and therefore we lost about 50% of our business for a period of time. So we utilized PPP funding and got through that. And then as we recovered from the pandemic, we had inflation. So our ingredients, our packaging, a lot of things increased 30 to 40%. Packaging costs have doubled. Labor costs have uh, skyrocketed. and. All of this kind of comes together in this perfect storm to create higher pricing on the products so that we can continue to stay in business and produce them. Buying equipment now is way more costly than it was prior. You know, an, a piece of equipment, an oven for example, a, a new oven five years ago was about $6,000. The same oven now, brand new, might be $12,000. It's quite a big jump in costs to operate and expand. What are three tips that you have for other entrepreneurs? Tip number one is when you first start your business, be prepared to work a lot the first few years. Probably 50 to 70 hours a week, um, very little time off for this kind of business. It's pretty grueling, but as the years pass and you can afford to build a good solid team, then you can back off on that and work more like a 40 hour work week. My second tip would be to have another stream of income when you're starting your business or a large savings that you can live off of and live frugally because it'll be a few years before you make any money. Unless you have investors or some other way of getting this going, but if you're just a person going to the bank and taking out a micro loan, you're going to want to have some other way to support yourself because it'll, it'll take some time to, to build an income. I would say my third tip would be get mentorship, take advantage of getting good advice. Uh, go to your local SCORE chapter, speak to other business owners, get financial advice from an accountant, learn how to run QuickBooks or some other program, stay on top of the money that you're spending, what's coming in, what's coming out, what your profit is. Set goals, long-term and short-term. See your progress, keep track, check in every week, every month, and then make adjustments, whether it's adding new accounts, sourcing supplies from a different vendor at a better cost, finding ways to make your team more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of things you, do, you can do to keep profits growing, but if you don't track what you're doing and don't constantly look at it, then you won't know how to make the adjustments or when you need to make the adjustments. Asking for help is 100% the most important thing, like getting expert advice, seeking out information that's going to help you, and also following government regulations. Work with the Health Department or Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. That's who comes in and inspects us. Um, they're great people to ask questions. What should we do about this? You know, whatever kind of questions 
that might come up for running a business like this. They're, they're a great place to start. So right now the team is making cinnamon rolls. They would start by measuring out all the flours and ingredients. So you can see there's another batch that's gonna follow this one um, over here that's already measured out. They'll assemble all the ingredients, mix it up in the mixer, lift the bowl up over here, and then they're weighing out segments of dough for each cinnamon roll. And as you can see, they're gonna roll it out and then there's a cinnamon sugar and vegan butter filling that's gonna go in the middle. And then they'll roll it into sort of a log or a cylinder, slice it, weigh the slice to make sure it's the right weight. And then they'll get loaded up onto a rack where they will proof for about 20 minutes depending on the temperature in the room. And then they'll get baked, and then they'll cool, and then they'll get packaged along with a little container of frosting. And then they'll get labels and a lock code printed on each label. And then they'll be boxed up in cases and frozen. Do you make to order, or do you make products and then say, I have this, and this is what I can sell? That's a great question. The latter would be what a storefront bakery is going to do. They're going to rotate it. They're going to advertise what they're featuring that week. With us, we're making to order, so we have a lot of regular customers who we know are ordering a certain volume of certain products regularly. So we keep those amounts of products on hand in our frozen inventory so that we're cycling through them every week or two. So we know, for example, that Forest Hills Foods is going to want you know, a case of each kind of muffin and cupcake every two weeks. So we're going to always have on hand what the stores are typically ordering. How long did it take until you were back here in person? I did that within the first year. I started out with a few contract workers. It took probably a couple years before I actually added employees. Um, right now we have six employees, a bakery manager, a lead baker, a couple of bakers, um, a couple of bakery assistants, um, and a little two part-time delivery people. And they accomplish a lot in a short period of time. The goal is to create as much product with as few people running the equipment as possible. That's always the goal, uh, automation. But to have still a high quality of a work experience with um, satisfying work and a, a variety of products to work with, not so much uh, assembly line type labor. I like for team members to feel challenged and like they're growing and not like they're always doing the same thing day in and day out. And there is a wide variety of tasks in this sort of a business. You know, for example, Lauren here, she's a great baker. She bakes all the products, but she also knows how to take an order from a store and create an invoice and respond to emails. So most of the team is cross-trained in various tasks so that they can cover for each other when we take time off. So why Kind Crumbs? Why is it some of the products? Kind Crumbs products are just the best tasting gluten-free products around. And it's going to be free of other allergens, so you can hit multiple things with one product. You know, if you're gluten-free and you have vegan friends coming over for dinner, grab our cupcakes or one of our cakes for dessert and everybody's needs are met. Um, they taste great. They taste like what your grandma made. They don't taste like factory stuff. It's not filled with partially hydrogenated junk. It tastes great. If our flavor is raspberry lemon, we're using real raspberries and real lemons and not a bunch of artificial flavors. Um, if something has chocolate chips in it, it's going to have chocolate chips, not like two chocolate chips, but plenty of chocolate chips. We're generous with our frosting. We want things to taste great. We want it to taste like something that everybody at your party isn't going to enjoy and it's not going to be like, oh, it's a gluten-free birthday so I'm stuck eating gluten-free cake. No, it's going to be great. Everyone's going to love it. And where can we find you? You can find our products all over Grand Rapids and surrounding areas in grocery stores, family fairs, D&Ws, health food stores, Kingma's Market, coffee shops, some of the bigger bakeries, places like Sandy's Donuts, I already mentioned, Robinette's in the fall. We have a website, kindcrumbs.com. It has a list of all the businesses that carry our products. Um, you can also find it as far south as Kalamazoo, as far east as Lansing, the Lakeshore, and even up in Traverse City.